Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Previously in our machine component design course, we have studied about the gear geometry and gear forces. So now in this chapter, we will focus on the gear tooth strength. This is because we need to know how much the power or torque a given pair of gears could transmit without tooth failure. Okay, uh, this photo elastic image shows you the stress distribution of a gear tooth during operation. Uh, as you can see in this image, we have two areas of stress concentration. At the root or fillet of the gear, the stress concentration is due to the bending stress caused by the tangential load F tangent applied at the tip of the gear tooth. Uh, the stress concentration at the top is due to the surface contact between the gear teeth, or we call it surface stress. So these two stresses uh, we should consider in our gear to strength analysis. Okay, as you can see in this image, uh, there are two modes of failure on a gear tooth. Number one is a bending failure due to excessive bending stress um, that act on the root of a gear tooth. Yeah, it will cause a tooth breakage. And uh, the other one is a surface failure due to excessive contact stress. Uh, due to frequent contact between the gear teeth so it will cause surface splitting and wear in order to do gear tooth strength analysis we begin by finding the gear tooth bending stress according to Lewis uh, the maximum bending stress should be at the root of the gear tooth if we assume the gear tooth as a cantilever beam the equation for bending stress is sigma equal to m over i over c where M is the moment, uh, in our case is F tangents times the length, I is a moment of inertia. So the rectangular section at the root is a B T cube over 12 for moment of inertia, where B is our face width of the gear, and C is a distance from the neutral axis, so in our case C is T over 2. So the equation can be represented 6 times F tangent times length over B T square. Anyhow, this equation is somehow hard to determine because of the L, the length, and the T. Uh, since this L and T are difficult to determine, so we'll convert the equation in terms of Y, the Lewis form factor, and also P, the diametrical pitch of the gear. Lewis form, fa form factor Y is, uh, is actually a function of uh, the pressure angle V, the addendum, the addendum of the gear, and also the number of teeth, teeth of the gear, L. There is a graph in your textbook that you can find the Y value, the Lewis form factor, based on your number of teeth and also your pressure angle V. So our basic equation for gear tooth bending stress can be shown here. Uh, the top one is for English unit and the bottom one is for SI unit. Yeah, if you look uh, at the bottom one, uh, the only difference is uh, we have M, the small M. M is a module of the gear, where module is a diameter or pitch diameter of the gear over the N, the number of teeth of the gear. Okay, if we focus off this English unit Lewis bending stress equation, the equation is somehow not that accurate. This is because we assume that the gear tooth is as a cantilever beam and we assume it as a static condition. There are certain factors that we ignore of this gear tooth bending stress equation. To make the equation more accurate, the equation can be represented like this. The ECMA, the American Gear Manufacturers Association, has set the equation for gear tooth bending stress as shown here. As you can see, the previous equation from Lewis, the value y is changed to j, where j is the spur gear geometry factor. Actually, j comes from this Lewis bending stress equation after we considering fatigue stress concentration factor Kf and Lewis form factor y, where actually j is the ratio of y over Kf. The value of J can be referred from figure 15.23.
in figure 15.23 we have two graphs one is for the pressure angle of 20 degree and the other one is for the pressure angle of 25 degree in general case we only take the lower graph curve which is for non-precision gear and no load sharing the upper curves are for high precision gears and with load sharing for an example of the pressure angle of 20 degree graph if we take the case where the number of teeth of the pinion gear is 18 the value of j is 0 0.235 and if the number of the teeth of the gear is 36 the value of j is 0 0.28 Okay, next is KV, dynamic factor or velocity factor. Since the gears are rotating, we could hear some noise because the gear teeth are acting on each other with a small gap in between. This will actually increase the gear load on the tooth more than its actual value. So this is why we should consider dynamic factor KV. You can get the value of KV either from the equation as shown or from the graph of figure 15.24. If you look at the graph, we have zones A, B, C, D, and E. These zones describe how the gear is machined and manufactured. Zone A is for high precision shift and ground, and as we move to a zone, zone E, the less precision the gear is machined. The x-axis is the gear pitch line velocity, V, and the y-axis is the value of KV. Beside this graph, you can also use the equation as shown for each type of gear teeth machine process for A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, KO is the overload factor, which describes the degree of load non-uniformity of driving and driven machinery. You can get the value of KO in table 15.1 in your textbook. If you look in this table 15.1, the first column is the driving or source of power and the others are for driven machinery. For an example, if your source of power is smooth and uniform and your machinery load is at moderate impact, the value of KO is 1.25. Okay, the last one is KM, the mounting factor, which describes the accuracy of mating gear alignment or load distribution along the gear tooth face width. We can get the value of KM in table 15.2. If you look in this table, the first area is types of gears mounting of your machinery, and the second area is the face width of your gear tooth in inch. If you look at the first column, the first row is for accurate mounting and precision gear and as we go down to the last row, the less accurate the gear mounting and the load distribution across the face width is not good. For an example, if your gear set is mounted on an accurate mounting with small bearing clearance and your gear tooth face width B is 1.25 inch, so the value of your KM is 1.3. Okay, now we know how to calculate our bending stress of the gear tooth. So since uh, the safety factor of the gear tooth is the strength of the gear tooth over the bending stress, so the next move is for us to calculate the SN, the endurance limit of the gear tooth. Okay, uh, to get the value of your endurance limit SN, uh, the equation 15.18 in your textbook, as shown here, the endurance limit SN is equal to SN prime times CL, CG, CS, KR, KT, KMS. Uh, the SN prime as usual is the RR more endurance limit. See, if, if our the material of the gear tooth is steel, so SN prime is 0 0.5 SUT, the ultimate strength of your material. CL, CL is the load factor, is 1 because since the load applied at, uh, to the gear tooth is always bending loads. And CG is the gradient factor or size factor. CG is 1 if your diametrical pitch of your gear tooth is greater than 5. And your CG is 0 0.85 if the diametrical pitch is less or equal to 5. Okay, CS is the surface factor. To get the CS, you can refer to figure 8.13 in your textbook. If you look in this figure, um, uh, we have a type of um, machine of the gear tooth and also the, our SUT and Obrina runners uh, to get our value CS. Unless it's stated in the question or um, it's known that what type of machine process uh, to the gear tooth, normally in general case we always use machine. So by knowing the machine is the process to make the gear tooth and the Obrina runners here, 
in HB or our SUT in KSI or Mega Pascal or Giga Pascal, we can get the value of our CS. Okay, KR is the reliability factor. You can get your KR in table 15.13, in table 15.3 as shown here. Let's say like if your machine is 99% reliability, so your KR value is 0 0.814. Okay, to get the KT, the temperature factor, we can use KT equal to 1 if the temperature of our system is less than 160 degree Fahrenheit. If not, we can use the equation stated in 15.19. Uh, the KT is 620 over 460 plus T, where T is any temperature greater than 160 degree Fahrenheit. In general case, uh, it's not stated. If it is not stated, the temperature of our machine, uh, so we can use the KT equal to one. Okay. Finally, for mean stress factor (KMS), we use KMS 1.4 for both input or output gear, since these gears have one-way bending. For idler gear, the value of KMS is one. As you can see from this image, uh, we, the, we have a condition if you look here, the input gear and the output gear. Uh, if you look at the driving gear and the driven gear, the tools, every single tools have one way bending. If we plot the load of the tools through times for both uh, input and output gears, so the graph of the bending load will be like this so the we have the f amplitude or f alternate and the mean force the mean load is uh, f divided by 2 but for the case of idler gear if you look the middle gear here every single tools have two way bending say for example on the left side here the tooth is go for bending stress in terms of uh, tension then the tooth will go to this quadrant it will happen to the other side of bending stress will go to compression so every single tooth in idler gear have two-way bending so if we plot the load through times for idler gear the we have alternate here the force and but the mean is zero so if you use for the plot in term of uh, stress so for one way bend, bending uh, for both input gear and output gear not the ideal gear so the strength we have the mean the mean strength is much higher compared to ideal gear two way bending where the mean is zero so that's why in this case we use uh, KMS is 1.4 for input and output gears and KMS is 1.0 for idler gears. Okay, finally, since we know how to calculate the bending stress of the gear tooth and we also know how to calculate the endurance limit of the gear tooth, so the safety factor of the gear tooth is Sn over sigma. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I've done explain to you guys about gear strength based on bending stress. Inshallah, in the next coming video, I will explain about gear to strength based on surface stress. Okay, selamat menyambut hari raya Adi Fitri, maaf Zahid dan Mati. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.